as we started digging into uh, this topic around online safety, screen time, social media, and how it's affecting teens, we came across some products that are labeled as kid-friendly phones. So parents purchase them for their kids, and they are supposed to have controls on them, limited access to websites, social media, um, and that kind of thing. So what we did is reach out to a few of the companies that offer these phones, and we asked for a sample so that we can review them and let you guys know what we think. It's really up to every family what they decide on what the journey looks like for their kids to get a phone, right? Every one of our children will have a phone in order to function in society. And so how that journey looks for you is going to be different from another family. I think some families are choosing to give their kids a kid-safe, kid-friendly phone with limited functionality to get them used to how it works, but in a safe environment before they turn... 14, 16, 17, whatever age, you give them the full-blown iPhone with all the options that we have available to us. Scrolling to Death was created to educate parents on how to keep their kids safe online and create a journey that looks right for their family. So um, that's really the goal in getting these phones and reviewing them for you guys. So the first company to respond when we reached out and asked for samples of these kid-friendly phones is a company called Bark. And they offer a few different products, and one of them is called the Bark Phone. So it looks like this. It is actually a Samsung Galaxy A14 with 5G, um, and it has the Bark software built in. And it's marketed as the only phone with Bark built in. And so I, I learned a little bit more about Bark's products and services. So their main uh, marketing message is that their product is a monitoring tool that scans your child's texts, emails, social media, and apps for digital dangers and sends you alerts. They say, it's not a clunky kid's phone, which can be embarrassing for teens and tweens. It's a state-of-the-art Samsung that has robust parental controls. So the parent is able to add and remove the parental controls that you think are best. Uh, the child cannot delete text messages without your permission. Um, download workaround VPNs or change the parental controls that you set. So parents are able to approve apps that they want to download, set time limits, um, remotely lock the phone, manage their calls and contacts. Um, you get alerts for dangerous content or things that are said uh, and, and a few other things. So as we speak with experts about these monitoring tools and devices, there's a trust issue here, right? So if you are feeling like you want to give your kid a phone, there's got to be a level of trust there as well. So you really need to reflect on that before you set up all these monitoring tools and privacy settings in what do you want that relationship to look like between you, your child, and their device. Is your relationship with them strong enough so that they would come to you if something inappropriate comes across their device? Or do you feel the need to monitor everything that they send out or is it a mixture of the two that's really up to you but i can't really do justice to these products without mentioning that layering on monitoring products on top of your children's devices can cause a trust issue between you and your child so just think about that before you employ one of these products for your family so this bark phone um, is $199 with no contract, or you can do something like $0 down with a two-year contract. They also have Bark Premium, which is an app, and Bark Premium is something you can access on an iPhone, Android, or tablet. So this one that I showed you, the Bark phone, is a um, Samsung device. And so if you don't want to employ Samsung within your family, you can just download their app and get access to their monitoring and screen time features without buying the phone, and that's $14 a month. The Bark Company also offers a product called Bark Home. It looks like an internet modem. It's marketed as a filter, an internet filter for raising kids in the digital age. So this internet parental control helps you manage screen time and filter websites on all of internet connected devices in your house. And this is interesting because it weaves in the gaming systems as well, where we've been hearing a lot of parents complain about 
the social aspect of the gaming platforms that their kids are using. And then they're getting exposed to kind of inappropriate conversations as they connect with other people on the gaming systems. So that's kind of interesting to think about. The cost of the Bark Home is $79 um, plus a cost of subscription, which I assume is the Bark Premium that we mentioned, but it's, it's not exactly clear on their website. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the Bark Phone. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. Looks like an iPhone, looks like a Samsung, same kind of product. It looks like a phone. It's loading up right now. Welcome to Bark. So we're getting into the system now, and I think we're going to be able to set up our parental controls. Okay, next step, they offer a QR code. So I need to scan from my phone the QR code that they offer to set up the subscription to Bark from my phone. So let's see what this does. Okay, so it's prompting me to set up my account. I did get an email from Bark, and um, I will be able to set up my account now through that email, I hope. This is easy. Yep, so the Bark team provided me with a password and username, so I'm gonna do that now. Okay, so now I'm gonna set up the profile within uh, Bark's site for their, for a pretend child. I'm not actually gonna give this to my child, but I wanna see how everything works. So I'm gonna set up my pretend child that is gonna be named Bart. <laughs> it's asking to connect with Wi-Fi. I'm gonna do that later connecting, um, setting up a VPN connection that allows it to monitor the traffic. Okay. Okay, so now it's asking me um, for to confirm some settings. Do I want to allow the App Store, um, do I want to allow the BART phone to browse and install apps from Google Play Store? So do I want my child to be able to download apps? Yes, but I want to require app approval before allowing any new installs, okay? Do I want to allow my child to text, enable sending and receiving text messages? I'm gonna leave that as on right now, but, I, but it requires contact approval. So I get to choose which phone numbers that Bart can call or text. I can enable the camera and then also block web browsing. So the Bart phone will not be able to access the web browser. Okay, looks good. Does Bart have a phone number you'd like to transfer? Not now. Oh, it gives you a phone number. Okay, I'm going to add that to my contacts and name it Bart. Okay, so my my iPhone has now been connected and all set up with the Bart phone. So here's with the Bark phone. So here's the Bark phone. It's connected. And now I'm just going to poke around. Now, I don't know how to use a Samsung device because I have an iPhone. So this is going to be interesting in itself. All right, so I have access to photos. I have access to phone calls. Now, I haven't really set up any of the <clears throat> filters or term restrictions. So I'm going to text myself, make sure it works. OK, so it's asking me, the kid, as a kid using the phone, to request for approval to text this number. So I believe that I will get that request on my phone. Okay, so I got an email from Bark saying that my kid wants to text this number. I'm going to review that request and approve it. What I want to test is if I can text inappropriate language without setting anything up. I am going to text as my child, I'm going to text me. Let's see if I got the text. I got the text. Now I would like to see if I can text something inappropriate. Like what should I text? <laughs> I will say, should I say it out loud? 
Now I sent an inappropriate word. I sent the word sex. <laughs> and it sent. Do I get any not notification on inappropriate terms? No. OK. So far, in just this quick like 10, 15 minute process of setting up the phone, um, I've, I was able to uh, approve a phone number, my own phone number for my kid, my kid to be able to message on the phone. It doesn't look like there's built-in features to protect against inappropriate words. So that would need to be set up, and I haven't figured that out yet. I would need to download approved apps and approve them, download apps and approve them on my phone. So I'll be honest, I think it would take hours to get this all set up. And that's definitely worth the time to spend um, in order to safeguard your kid's phone. But what I worry about is you spend a couple hours setting it up and getting it linked up with your phone so that you have to approve everything. And then you hand it over to your kid. And your kid really becomes way more comfortable with how to use this phone. Number one, as an iPhone user, as an Apple user, the Samsung device is very confusing to me. I have, obviously, it's something I can figure out. But if I hand this to my kid, they're going to figure out how to poke around and um, manage this phone much more quickly than I am. I understand the connection. I see the connection where it's getting me to approve new contacts, um, app downloads, and things like that. But it still feels a little over my head feels a little overwhelming that I don't know how confident I would be once I set this all up and understand how it works. I don't know how confident I would be to hand this to my kid and let them kind of take it over. Um, it depends on the age of the kid, obviously. I'm in my world. My kids are all under eight. And so my kids do not need phones under eight years old. Um, that's just our choice for our family. Maybe in a couple of years, this would be something I would consider for my kid. Um, I think you need to assess why you think your kid needs a phone. For me, when I ask myself, does my kid need a phone and what would, a, what would they use it for? I don't have good answers for that. I don't need them to get a hold of me from where they are. They're always with other adults and authority figures that can get a hold of me currently. Um, they're just not at that age where they're moving around the world on their own. Uh, so I think that would be the only thing I would consider when giving my kid a phone right now is being able to contact me. And I, I know there are other products available to be able to contact your parent without having access to apps and text messaging anybody and that kind of thing and, and photos and all of that stuff. So I understand how the Bark phone works. I understand some of the benefits for a family. Uh, personally, with my kids' ages being under all under eight, it's not something I need for my kids right now, and I don't foresee using a product like this for at least a couple more years, if that. I'm going to take the time to set up more of the parental controls and really see if I can get this phone to a point where I would feel comfortable uh, giving it to my kid and feel confident that they're not going to access things that are inappropriate. Uh, so I will report back on that um, once I have a couple of hours to do that. <laughs> so um, if you have any questions about this product, um, you know, I'm not an expert on it. You can ask me, but definitely head over to Park's website and ask them as well. Um, they were very responsive in my outreach to request a phone to do a review on. Thanks guys for listening and I will be in touch with more reviews. Uh, the next phone we're getting is called Pinwheel. We're also going to be interviewing a team member from Pinwheel and asking some questions about, you know, the purpose of these phones, the safety of these phones, and uh, a few other things that, you know, we've even gotten from parents like you guys. So thanks for watching. I'll be in touch soon.